indeed a uh, negative entity that is uh, in control of the Illuminati? Is Lucifer a being of love and light, and is Lucifer in control of the Illuminati? Yeah. Many of your understandings of who you think your spiritual leaders were or are is not accurate. In, in summation, no beings are really beings of dark light. They are simply beings that are divine and have taken on a dark role. Lucifer, for all intents and purposes, took on that role transmuted a lot of that energy and is no longer that same being. Lucifer is not an individual either. Lucifer is actually a collective of beings. All right? And this you'll also start to understand, that you're not an individual. Each and every one of you is part of a collective. And when you get beyond the third dimensional veil, that's when you start to hear about this council and that council and this collective and that collective. It's because we all are collectives. Now, yes, we do have individual experience, but we understand that we are part of the whole. And as we interact, we feel the effects of our actions on the whole. And that's what allowed Lucifer to transform, this collective to transform as this energy was played out. Your history is nothing like it has been given to you. We are giving you a version of history, but we will tell you this. It is not until each of you are ready to access history from within yourself that you are going to be satisfied with what you get. And there has been so much manipulation of your history. Your timeline is, is far vaster than you can even begin to imagine. That even if you get it from us, there is so much manipulation that has been, uh, that has occurred on this planet around history that it will trigger doubt. You'll say, well, this bit resonates, but this doesn't. And again, truth is not absolute. So which version of the truth are you going to choose? Whose vantage point are you looking at it from? So what you'll find that many of the stories that you've been told specifically around your religious figures they are iconic figures, and most of them are collectives. So take it not as literal, but as symbolic. And when you start to see it symbolically, then it's going to start to resonate, especially for those of you who felt disconnected from it. Take the bits and pieces and leave the rest behind because in a lot of those religious texts there is truth because it's all encoded and if you know the coding you can read it very easily but there's also a lot of manipulation that's going on in there if you want somebody to believe you you're not going to tell them a bold-faced lie you're going to tell them a half lie and sprinkle it with some truth which is what's been done in many of your manuscripts to control the masses and how that information was used by those who were trying to amass more power now, again, there's no need to resent these beings because this is part of the game. And all of you have played the light and the dark. Many of you get very nervous when you think, oh, well, I haven't had any dark lifetimes. I don't want to be dark. <laughs> Those are some of your most interesting lifetimes because it was so unlike your experience of being connected. There was so much knowledge and information. From the human perspective, it was hard. All right, pain is perception, by the way, and we're talking emotional and physical. If you change your perspe perspective, you will change the pain. You'll let it go. It's really simple. If there's one thing you can walk out of this room with today, it would be that. Pain is perception. Change the framework, and you'll release it. So, does that help? All right. I have a question um, regarding sound at the sound practice. I was wondering if the uh, Atlanteans was using sound uh, with the open valves and if they were using harmonics, overtones, and creating the sounds with the open valves. So were the Atlanteans using sound specifically open vowels and harmonics? Correct. Yes. Tone and sound. Specifically working with the human voice is one of the most potent healing modalities that you have on the planet. We say this time and time again, and you're just beginning to rediscover it. There are several reasons why we say that. 
when you start working with the human voice as opposed to an instrument, the energy and the vibration that is created as the instrument is being created is all encoded within the instrument. So depending on the frequency of the person creating the instrument, that's also infused in there. Um, also scientifically, uh, mathematically, the precision of the instrument itself is, uh, can be affected. Now, yes, sometimes when you work with instruments, you can find a specific frequency. But when you start working with the human voice and you start working with harmonics, you start to heal interdimensionally. Because with the harmonics, you're vibrating up a scale. And you are going to go beyond what you can hear, all right, and it will continue vibrating up through matter. And now what you're going to start working more and more of here shortly is the language of light. And there are several here this weekend who are working with the language of light. There are a lot of Arcturans here as well, so we're happy to see that. The Arcturans are proficient with working with the language of light. So we encourage you to explore that as well. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, we'll go off here for one second. It is the combination of working with the frequency of color, light, sacred geometry, and the vibration of matter. All right, so it's, it's quite potent. It is the universal language, and there are dialects, if you will, but everyone understands the, the frequency of the language of light. Now, the Atlanteans were utilizing tone and sound to generate power. They would create standing waves. Some of your stone rings were set up to create standing waves so that you had a generator, and you could plug into that power and that frequency. Tone and sound was also used to heal. Now, when you work with the human voice, there is an emotional carrier wave that goes along with the sound that is vibrating the matter. The emotional carrier wave, your intent is huge to the manifestation process. So the Atlanteans, and specifically again the priestly caste, understood how to manipulate matter how to create anagravitic devices, how to, um, how to change form, because they understood that it wasn't solid. Everything was vibrating. Everything was malleable. And they used tone and sound to do it, specifically working with groups. Group energy, as you get together and you increase, one plus one is not two. All right, it's exponential. The more people you have, it goes up and up and up very, very quickly. So the group intent could make huge transformations, huge transformations. And again, this goes back to inner technology versus outer technology, part of the struggle, because those who are working with inner technology were also working with the voice. Now, there were also devices that were created to manipulate others, utilizing crystals and tone and sound. That, and those were in the earlier... Uh, civilizations of Atlantis a little bit at the end here, but and they had rediscovered the technology, um, but they were trying to manipulate the masses with vibration. Does that sound familiar? All right, you're doing the very same thing with some of the frequencies that are being pulsed out to you to manipulate you. Some of them through your television set, through your radios, and others simply through the airwaves. And this is being done again. But this started in Atlantis. You played this out one other time in Atlantis there. And at the time of Atlantis, the souls who were incarnating from the higher perspective knew that it wasn't quite time for the entire planet to go through the ascension process. But they thought, all right, we'll give it a whirl and see how it goes, see what we learn, because we know we're not moving through the photonic band just yet but will gain knowledge and wisdom that we can use in the future as we project ourselves here. And there was a lot gained, a lot of knowledge and wisdom about your, your sovereignty, all right? What power you gave away. Many of you gave away a lot of power, those of you who are working specifically with the Anunnaki, and the Anunnaki is still present. The Anunnaki are locked into working with outer technology. They've cut themselves off energetically, emotionally, and so they can no longer access source in the same way that you can. When you are fully open and enjoy, your field is about six feet wide. And it's a huge data stream that you can receive energy, information, and light. 
When you're in fear, it shrinks down. When you're completely fearful, it's about an inch wide. And yet you still have connection, but it's really challenging. All right, and that's what some of these other beings are doing. Now, there's no sense in feeling angry about the manipulation because, again, they are simply repeating this pattern so that you can integrate. When you start hearing about the things that are going on in your planet and the manipulation that's happening, some of these dastardly deeds that individuals are up to, see how you're feeling about it. How is it resonating in your own body? Are you looking at it and feeling very flat and saying, oh, that's interesting, that's being played out again, hmm. Or are you feeling really upset about it, really angry, frustrated, fearful? If you're feeling any of those lower vibrations and you recognize that that's where you are, wonderful. You've just identified another fear that's running at the subconscious level. Now, what will happen within your own energetic field? You are holding all of the records of all these other lifetimes. They're showing up because, again, you're holographic. Now, as you recreate a re-experience, that vibration in the now, so let us say you are reactivating that control issue because you're watching and seeing what's going on and you feel that you're controlled and you have no power. Boom, you've activated that frequency. Well, anywhere else in your field where that frequency exists in any of those other lifetimes, be they past, present, or future, they start to vibrate. It's like a room full of tuning forks. You hit the C, all the other C notes start to vibrate and it gets pretty loud. Same thing happens in your vehicle. Your emotions can feel out of balance for how you would logically think you should be responding. You might feel really impassioned about something and say, well, this is weird. I don't know why I'm so upset. It should feel, you know, I, I could understand I'd be a little bit, but really, I feel off the charts. And that's because you've activated these other lifetimes. So how you deal with it in the now, how you see why you've created, all right, so I'm feeling controlled. The reason I've created that as a reflection for myself is to see that I'm a sovereign being and I have more power that I can access and it's safe to stand in my divine light. And that's what that fear has just shown you as you've gotten that reflection. And you make a choice in that moment to stand in your full light. When you drop that victim state of consciousness and shift to co-creator, you release the fear. Now, when you release the fear in the now and you learn how to integrate, you send that information through your entire field, so anywhere else in any other lifetimes that it exists, it gets neutralized. You then send that out to those other aspects of yourself that are having that experience, not in the past or future, but in the now, another version. And they receive that record and they say, all right, do I want to work on this or can I go ahead and integrate it? Sometimes, and it's only, uh, we would say about 5% of the time, do you decide to not receive and run the program? Because you say, all right, I think I have it, but I really want to work on it and just do it one more time to make sure I got it. And occasionally you will do that for yourselves. But typically you will say, all right, the process of integration, I've got it. I'm going to run the program and clear it out of my field now. Now, this constantly happens where, with where you are. You're constantly receiving information from other aspects of yourself and healing things without having to be aware of it because they're sending you the how-tos. Easy enough, yes? You're helping yourselves. Your genetic line is also doing this for you, by the way. Your grandparents who aren't really past, all right, or your great-grandparents, they're having their life. It's just on another point of reality. And as they're learning and clearing things on their own genetic material, they're sending you the information as well. It's a bit of a mind bender. But there you have it. So that was a very long-winded answer to your question about sound. Thank you. Regarding the um, what you were saying about the earth, you know, if we heal ourselves, we heal the earth. We have this interconnected uh, communication going on. Why is there such interest? I uh, think why is there so such interest in the core of the earth? And regarding this issue, I'd like to ask you about this. That it seems to me an important point is to, is to balance the male, the divine male, and the divine feminine within each one of us. And if there is some kind of re relationship to the core of the earth relating that, that there is a masculine and a feminine aspect of that that needs to be balanced, I'm wondering if you could give some more information regarding that. So the balancing of the masculine and the feminine in the core of the earth, uh, how does that all work? Uh, 
it's been a long time, as we said, since you've had the two integrated on the planet, and there is this natural response that, uh, you know, the last time the Divine Feminine was on the planet, there was all kinds of persecution, um, and, and there has been just the opposite, where the Divine Masculine has been persecuted by the Feminine. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's happened as well. So it's, this pendulum keeps swinging back and forth, and it's about stopping the swing in the middle. The core of the Earth contains all of the records, all of the knowledge, and all the wisdom. Um, it is also a small star. All right, it has its own stellar core, if you wish, its own spark. You can see yourself even as a star. All right, as um, many of you are starting to see in your electronic devices orbs. And if you can imagine, each of those orbs uh, exists within each and every one of you. All right, that's your, your, your stellar core. It's the reason why we call it stellar, because it's like a little star. <laughs> you really are little stars. So it's about accessing, and, and part of the reason why you want to access the core is because that's where all your records are. That's where your true history is being held. Earth is a library. She's storing all of the experiences of all of the beings on the planet. You are the paperback version, as we always say. You're holding all the records of all your lifetimes. Now, all of the information from all the planets in the solar system gets sent to the sun, Helios. Helios holds all of the information for the solar system. All the information for the solar system gets sent off to Alcyon, the central sun in the Pleiades. This is where we reside. We align with Alcyon. We don't incarnate because we don't have physical form, but rather we align our energies and we align with a stellar body instead of a planetary body because we're not in density. And Alcyon holds all of the records for the entire galaxy of all the experiences that have ever been. So you can think of it as yourself as the paperback, as the planet as your branch library, the sun as the main library, and Alcyon as your library of Congress. So that's part of the interest in the cores because that's where your records are. Is, is that why that, is there any relationship between all of this drilling that in the technology, maybe it's controlled by the Anunnaki, this, this, that various countries like Japan, the United States, they're drilling so deeply. Is there some kind of, of, of race to get to the core of the earth on a physical, technical? Is there a race to get to the core of the Earth? Um, there are materials that they're trying to get to, and they're also trying to alter vibratory patterns. They're trying to alter frequencies. They're manipulating the planet again. It's the same thing. Um, it's not always done with malice, by the way. Sometimes there is a, there are beliefs that it is to protect, and it was the same thing that happened in Atlantis. They thought that they were trying to... to avoid a catastrophe. Now, uh, while we're speaking of catastrophes here, many of you can get triggered around 2012 with this fear of upheaval and huge natural disasters. This is an Atlantean memory. There's fear of replaying that catastrophe. It's not going to happen that way. All right, it's just not. We, we don't see that in any of the probable timelines that we are dealing with you on. Right, there are other probable timelines where that occurs, but not with the versions of you that we're sitting here talking with. How's that again for a mind bender? <laughs> we promise not to break your minds, just to bend them a little. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's about trying to alter some of the energies and harness more energies and, you know, to avoid what is a perceived natural disaster. But the truth of the matter is, if you would allow things to be as they are, Mother Earth will find her own natural balance, and so will you, without trying to struggle and manipulate. And that's what's going on with the dark. They're trying to control and manipulate, as opposed to going with the natural flow. The sun is constantly sending you information about these changes. Remember, the sun's a library. She's the metronome for the solar system. She tells all the planets in the system when it's time for an upgrade. All right, Earth is getting ready for her upgrade. Other planets 
in the solar system have gone through upgrades. They've gone through the ascension process. But what you're doing is unique because the planet's doing it with you. And that's never been done before. And we don't really know how it's going to play out because it hasn't been done before, period. We can look at probable timelines and kind of get some ideas. But because you are growing and changing so quickly, you are, you are altering timelines left and right. You can't even begin to, as we're seeing all of them unfold, it's getting really complicated for us. Because normally you would have maybe one or two major issues in a year. You've got hundreds now. So if you think of all the branches on a tree that can come out of your hundred choices, it gets harder for us to look down them and tell you which one you're going to choose because there may have been a 2% chance that you were going to take a leap of faith. But if there were ever a lifetime where you would choose that 2% chance, it's now. And you all are doing it more and more. So we'd say 98% chance you're not going to do it, but you choose that 2% because you say that looks really fun. Let's go for it. And so you do. And so you alter your timelines. So... Again, thank those who are playing the dark role because they are simply illuminating and many times within yourself, if they are within your awareness and you find yourself getting activated, thank them. They've just done you a huge service because those beings who are playing the dark role at the highest levels are the ones who love you the most because they are having to deal with all of the karma. They say, all right, I'll play the dark role this time. You played it last time, I'll do it now. And I'm going to have to deal with all that karma, but because I love you, I'll do it. I'll learn how to integrate. All right? And when you see them, again, it's this divine spark, not all the distortions, not this being who sees himself as limited, who feels that they're disconnected. The control and the manipulation is happening because they feel disconnected from source energy. When we talk about ETs even, the Anunnaki, who feel like they have to control and manipulate, it's because they are disconnected from source. When you feel your connection to source energy run within you, it makes it much easier to have compassion for them because they cannot access that. And they have been long since disconnected, and many of them are longing to go home. They're longing to reintegrate. It's been a long game for them because their life cycles are much, much longer. But they are providing a service in the game of duality. And when you can acknowledge them as divine beings who've done that role, you're going to create a different version of reality for yourself completely. You're not going to feel controlled. You're not going to feel manipulated. Make sense? Most of what you need to do in order to increase your vibration, in order to alter your reality, is really very simple. It all happens within it's not so much what you do in the outer world. There, now, you are physical beings, and you need to take action. But most of the fine-tuning that you do within yourself is going to make the greatest change in your reality. And again, this is about you making changes within you. You can't make changes for anyone else. They've got to make them on their own. The only place that you hold power is in your own version of reality, and your version of reality is different than everybody else's because of their filters. Each of you has distortions and filters, these overlays, these programs, as we were talking about, that you take on before inc incarnating. Those are your programs. You put them into play. And everybody's going to perceive their reality based on those distortions because they're processing the data through the mind. So you can turn yourself into a pretzel, as we always say, to try to make somebody else happy. But if they are determined in being miserable, they're going to be miserable, and there's nothing you can do about that. The only thing you can do is hold your own vibration and say, hey, it feels pretty good up here if you want to choose this vibration. And that's it. And their choice to stay in that lower vibration is a valid one. There is nothing wrong with it. It is a vibrational selection and an experience. They can hold their vibration and it doesn't matter because you can create a very separate version of reality. And this is really what's going on as well as the ascension process. You have multiple versions of the planet which are coexisting one on top of another in space. They're in different frequency ranges. Those who are vibrating at the higher rate can look down and observe what's going on on the lower realms, but those in the lower realms can't see up. Just as you can't see up and see your guides, most of you. All right, but your guides can see you. So unless you raise your vibration, you can't see them. Once you raise it, then you can. And that's what's going on. So if you're vibrating at the lower levels, you're going to create more 
of that which you're pulsing out, which is lower frequencies. You're going to create more traumas and dramas. If you're vibrating at a higher level, you're going to create a different version of reality, one that's more peaceful. We are co-creating. Now, depending on where you're at, you may be sharing a version of reality. So you can watch the economy decline. You can watch your political structure start to fall apart. But does that mean that your, your life has to be in trauma and turmoil? No. You say, oh, good, we're headed for change. We're going to create something new. This is what I'd like to create. And you start working locally. You start working with your own uh, community. And that's where your power is. It's not about getting angry with those at the top that you think are creating the loss. If you start pulling your power back to where you are and working where you are, you will remove your energy from those old systems. Your whole system is defunct and it's got to fall because it can't hold the higher vibration. Right? This is why Atlantis fell. Because the system was defunct. It couldn't hold that same vibration. And so you, you've got to break things down to build them back up. And that's what you're in the process of doing. So what else? Oh, I wanted to ask a question about uh, when you're talking about uh, healing by the human voice or the, the human voice healing by tone and sound. Are you talking specifically like the work of Tom Kenyon and the Hathors and, and Metatron and that type of uh, singing and voice healing? Well, we're talking about, the you know, is, is sound healing the work of, of a couple specific individuals? And we're saying, no, it's, it's about many individuals who are already working with it. Uh, there are many sound healers who are working. There, those are a few, but uh, humans working with your own voice, working specifically with the vowels, mm -hmm. all right, and working with overtones, harmonics. All right, and, and you as individuals can start playing around with it. You may say, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not a singer. We're not talking about singing. Not at all. It's very different. But just start making some tones and sounds. Start with ah. Pick a note. How does it feel in your body? Where does it resonate? Move up the scale. How does that change where it resonates, how it feels? Does the note brighten? Does it expand? Does it contract? You have within you all of these records, all the knowledge and wisdom. And when we say the integration of Atlantean light, we don't mean the light end of the spectrum. We mean knowledge, wisdom, information. You have that within your records. You all know, at a subconscious level, how to work with tone and sound. You all know how to work with frequency. You do it now. You read people's energy all the time. When you walk into a room and you see someone and they're standing in the air and you think, ooh, they look angry, they feel angry, you're reading their energy. We always get tickled when you ask permission. Can I look at your records? Can I look at your energy? Because from our perspective, it's a bit like asking someone, can I look at you and see that you're blonde? <laughs> can I look at you and see you have blue eyes? Is that all right? <laughs> Your vibration, you are, you are nothing but frequency. And it's open. Now you, as an individual, may try to close it. You may try to hide it. All right? And sometimes it can be challenging to read another's energy because they are trying. They're closing it down. But it is always available because you are part of the whole. The ego may not want you to experience it, but the higher part says yes. All right? But there are many who are working with tone and sound and, and not just on this planet. <laughs> many of you have helpers in the Lyran and Arcturan star systems. They are proficient at working with tone and sound. The Lyrans are wonderful healers. The Arcturans are wonderful arbitrators. We call them the ambassadors to the universe because they are able to work with beings who um, are disputing and able to work with the language of light where there is no judgment. So if you're communicating with someone and you have no judgment, you're going to be able to get that information across. Then there's not going to be any resistance. But if you have resistance in your field and so do they, you're going to play it out. You're going to activate it in both of you. So the Arcturans are 
wonderful at working with tone and sound and, and sacred geometry, so the Lyrans, the Lyrans work with sacred geometry as well. Thank you. You're welcome. So what else? Okay. Uh, recession and abundance. Can you please, uh, how was it played out before and how we kind of uh, bring it into our reality right now? Recession and abundance, how has it played out before? Well, uh, money is nothing more than energy, plain and simple. And when you all start to get that, you're never going to have another problem with money. It's just energy. So where is your energy not flowing? Um, as we said before, a lot of the masses within Atlantis got preoccupied with the material. Money was, it wasn't structured as money, it was more energy and how's your energy being used, but not so much with paper and exchange of goods and materialism. There was, it was just a very isolated existence where individuals got focused on, on non-important things, on things that, um, were disconnected. That's the best way we can say it, because it, in that respect, um, their focus was very different. Uh, they, it was, and sometimes it was a bit obsessive. People get obsessed about uh, one little thing and keep focusing on that. And also um, pleasure. They were also very focused on pleasure and, and the physical vehicle and achieving more physical pleasure. And uh, also with the sexual chakras. That's getting played out again as well. So with money now, again where we were talking about observing what's going on with the collective consciousness, so you can be in a recession, but that doesn't mean that energy cannot flow in your reality. So you can have a very abundant reality while everyone else is experiencing recession because you're pulsing out a different vibration. Everyone else is buying into that version of history, that version of reality. They're buying into the frequency. Now, the one other thing we want to say here is that your job, your paycheck, your clients, your employer, they are not your source of abundance you and your connection to source energy is where your abundant source lies. Lies in your creativity, your ability to connect with source because it can come from unexpected means. A lot of times you all get locked into the idea of I want to win a lottery, but that's just one means, that's just one way and, and frankly it can be a bit limiting because you're looking at one single door and there are 50 doors right beside it that can open up and you can walk through if you stay open. So you've got to be open to the form that that vibration takes and trusting that the universe always matches your call. What you pulse out, you get back, always. Now, where the disconnect happens is that what you may be asking for is a very high vibrational signature. So it's a stretch for you to get up to that level to pulse it out, and you do. You pulse it out, but you can't stay there, so you drop out. So the universe brings it back, and it's way up at the top, at the top level where you were, and you're not there. So you think it just never showed up. All right, so you've got to be at the same vibratory level that you put the order in at in order to receive. Now, what you will create often for yourselves then are intermediate steps or things that you need in order to integrate and to clear to get your vibration up. The universe always brings you what you need in order to get what you want. All right, the ego may say, I don't want this, <laughs> but it is the thing that you need to see or perceive in order to shift your vibration. And this is where the law of reflection is so important because if you're observing what you're getting back, that will tell you exactly where your frequencies are and what beliefs need to be shifted or what beliefs you want to reinforce. If they're positive ones, you're going to want to reinforce them. All right? But the universe always wants to support you and always wants energy to flow. So if money's not flowing, 
your energy is not flowing. So look and see where you're in resistance. It's as simple as that. And you often you all set this up for yourself to get money to stop to flow because as soon as money stops flowing, you all pay attention. Because <laughs> you've got lots of clues before money stopped flowing, but you didn't listen. All right. So what else? Yes, can you explain uh, or describe a daily practice that we might use to get more uh, in touch with our, our personal power and prepare for integration and uh, working connection with the earth? Is there a daily practice for you all to reconnect uh, more? Other than meditation and visualization? or <laughs> Other than the things we would recommend? <laughs> Here's, here's what we would say. With the meditation, do you need to sit in meditation for hours? No. All right, what meditation does is it gets you out of the mind. To get out of your mind doesn't take hours. It doesn't take a long time. If you can find that image of something that puts a smile on your face, you're going to switch operating systems. All right? And that's what the meditation basically does. It, it also gets you connected with the vehicle. It also gets you reconnected with the natural rhythms. If you're connecting to your heart center, you will reset all of that. You will reconnect. Now, we are not big fans of ritual, all right, because we think that there are infinite ways of achieving an outcome. The rituals, many of them that you experience on the planet, were designed at a time when the overall vibration of the planet was much lower because Earth is increasing her frequency. And... It was a way, a method that could be passed down because remember you were going through dissension so you wanted to pass information down to yourself so you created ritual. Now you're back at a point where the ritual is only going to take you so far and you're going to have to leap and start flying because this has never been done before. There is no ritual for what you are about to experience because it hasn't been done. So you're going to have to listen to yourselves. You're going to have to listen to your inner guidance to see what the next step is. Take a breath, everybody's getting a little nervous. <laughs> you have all the information that you require. You have all the knowledge and wisdom from all lifetimes. Not just your own. You can go into the records and get everybody else's as well. But you've forgotten that you've got a library card. All right, so use it. Get yourself heart-centered and say, all right, when you're heart-centered, remember you're open. Say, I would like information on how to increase my frequency, or I would like more information on this particular star system, or I would like to have a conversation with my guide about this, that, or the other. The more specific you are, the better able we are to assist you, because you've got free will and we don't want to interfere with that. So if you're asking, what do I need to know, we say, where do we begin? But if you say, I want to know specifically about this, we say, all right, here's A, here's B, here's C. So get specific. You all aren't used to challenging yourselves and thinking and using your imagination. If we say you could ask us any question in the universe, how many of you would go blank? <laughs> or how many of you would have one question? So we want to encourage you to start using that curiosity again. You'll find this specifically with healing modalities, that you are pulling in new information about how to work with the vehicle. You're blending modalities together. It's not about one single modality, and what worked yesterday may not work tomorrow. And it's the same thing in your practice, if you want to call it that. What worked for you yesterday may not work tomorrow. So you are going to have to tune into yourself and, and see all right, well, why don't I try this? A lot of this is exploration. This is what a creator being does they explore. They try things. Some things work, some things don't. It's not right, it's not wrong. That's where you all get shut down, is that you think that there is judgment associated with it. Oh, I failed. No, you had a vibrational experience and you're not interested in repeating it. That's it, it was a vibrational selection. But there's all this conditioning about failure and being wrong that gets processed through the mind. But as creative beings, you're constantly trying everything. As we said, there were two other grand experiments before Earth. Those both, quote-unquote, failed. But they were great learning opportunities. Some of you participated in those as well. 
Not all of them. Could you tell me, the first one was Atlantis. What was the second one? These are off-world. Oh, okay. Off-world experiments. Were they both uh, with the planet and all the beings on the planet, like you said is happening now? Um, yes, there was. it was the attempt to integrate. Um, not the planetary energy as much as it simply was the collective energy. So... The third go-round here, we thought, all right, well, what if we try to increase the vibration of the planet to help support those who are increasing the vibration? So this is unique. As we said, this has never happened before. So on those other experiments, we were working simply with, um, with different genetic materials. Um, we worked with different species. And then we kind of got smart here for this go-round and said, let's put it all there. Let's try it all. Why not? And this is what we're saying. You just got to try things and see if it works or not. But don't be afraid to try. And you're free to change your mind. That's another part where you all get stuck. You think, if I make a choice, I'm stuck there to the bitter end. No. You make a vibrational selection, and if you don't like it, you make a new one. But you all spend more time worrying about a choice as opposed to just making a choice because you could stand in the same place and not make any choice and you would be five steps behind where you could be if you just simply make choices and make adjustments. Does that make sense, what we're trying to say there? You could be way far ahead, all right, and have moved forward if you simply make choices and course corrections as opposed to saying, hmm, what choice should I make? All right, so just go with it. The fastest way to shut down your energy is indecision. If you simply make a choice and you're in the flow, then you can make a new choice and just make course corrections because there are no wrong choices life gets much easier when you also perceive that all right can you comment on relationships with men and women where the women are on a spiritual path and the men are not quite there and can you comment on that um, well the question is can you talk about relationships where men are not on the path where women are. First, we would say it's really important not to hold that thought or to make that generalization because there are many relationships where the man is the one who is waking up and the woman is not. Now, we'll phrase it this way. For those of you who are in a relationship and your partner is not waking up, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Remember, your connection is with source energy. Now, the more you're connecting with source and increasing your vibration, you've made contracts with these other beings. Contracts are very, very malleable. They're very changeable. Um, they're not permanent. They're not eternal, as you, you might think. They are very flexible. It's like making a date for coffee, as we always say. You know, it's, it's that level. So if you, you're not going to be able to make it, it's not a big deal. So if that person is not willing or not interested in increasing the vibration at the same rate at that time, you may find that the relationship start to, starts to dissipate. If you're focused on yourself and what you want to create and generate out of a relationship, what you're pulsing out, you're going to get back. If that person is not ready, then that relationship is going to dissolve and you will pull in someone else who is that vibrational match. This goes back to what we, were starting to what we were talking about before, that you know that if that person in front of you is not the right vibrational match, there is someone right behind them that you will attract in 